We are back upon further review here as we continue our look around the Iowa Conference. And we're talking with University of Dubuque head football coach today, Stan Sweeple. And uh, again, they're getting underway with practices and uh, all the kids are set to report. It's been a very busy time here early in the year. Coach, appreciate you coming on with us and, and finding some time. How are you doing today? Thanks for having me. I'm doing really well and we are really looking forward to the uh, 2017 season. Absolutely. I, was, I had a chance to talk with uh, the co-college head coach Tyler Staker, and he was kind of running down you know, some of the top teams returning, and, and Dubuque was one of the teams that he mentioned. Can you explain a little bit? I mean, I'm sure you feel pretty good about your team as well. I mean, you have a lot of guys coming back? Uh, we have 17 starters off an 8-2 and two team that was second place in the Iowa Conference last year. Uh, we only lost uh, seven seniors. We returned 55 letters. And now, of course, Derek, you know, that can be misleading sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're a pretty veteran team. Uh, I think one of the issues that will be most important for us in fall camp is developing depth in the offensive and defensive lines. Uh, Derek, this is my 44th year of coaching. And, uh, I, have, I have never been in a job where we ever feel comfortable with the offensive and defensive line depth, so that's not very unusual. But we do return a number of uh, really big-time playmakers on our football team who had outstanding uh, underclass in here. Some were freshmen, some were sophomores, and some were juniors. So we return a really exciting group of, uh, I think, really good playmakers. But you can't win in, in anything in football if you don't have an offensive line and defensive line that can sustain injuries for a 10-game season. So that's our number one uh, Really, our number one goal in, in fall camp is to develop that offensive and defensive line and then move along our skilled kids and our position players that we're returning. Terrific. I guess, can we get a, just a little specific on some guys? You know, you, you mentioned you know, the big playmakers from last year, some guys that you're going to be counting on this year that really showed out last year. You bet, Derek. Probably one of the uh, players that we were really surprised, kind of went under the, uh, under the radar nationally, uh, in Division Three, but uh, he's got a great chance to be a seventh uh, round draft pick for us. Is a young uh, Michael Joseph, our senior corner, who is a two-time All-Conference pick. We'll have uh, we'll have every pro team here during our fall camp. We already have 26 scheduled to come and a look at Michael Joseph, uh, outstanding kid, a great story. As a freshman, he was on our scout team. That's how much he's developed as a sophomore. He uh, started for us and was a really good player. And as a junior, was uh, a unanimous first-team All-Conference pick, a defensive back, uh, probably a shade over six foot, about 190 pounds. He ran a 4-3-3 for the scouts in our spring workouts. So he's an extremely talented young man, a great hard worker, and a tremendous story. Uh, came from a little bit of an underprivileged setting, and has excelled for us not only on the field, but done a great job academically. And as one of those kids, you just never does anything wrong, accountable on time, doesn't have any issues. So he's a guy that's going to be a real integral part of our defensive secondary. And talking about our secondary, Derek, we returned four starters off our secondary, both safeties, Derek Trotter, an Iowa kid, and Derek Shambo, a uh, Platte, Wisconsin kid. Those are three-year starter for us at safety. And then we had a transfer last year, Johnny Higgins from Central College from Elgin, Illinois, who started six games for us. So in our secondary, Derek, we have uh, almost uh, 90 starts between our, our secondary and our and, and college. So that's a really reassuring factor. We have a backup at safety, Cody Benishevitz, who started four games for us, backing up our two safeties. And then we have another corner, Blaze Barista, uh, uh, out of Chicago, who's uh, going to be a sophomore who started three games for us last year. So, Derek, in that situation in our defensive backfield, boy, we really feel confident that we can put out some nickel and dime packages and have a tremendous amount of experience. No doubt sounds like you're well set there in the secondary. Uh, back to Michael Joseph a little bit. Uh, yeah, That's another guy that you know Coach Staker had mentioned uh, in terms of you know NFL scouts and all of that. Have you had a player uh, in your in your history? You said you know it's obviously been a kind of a long history. Have you had a player with this much uh, you know pro prospect? Well, you know, Derek, I've been here. This will be my ninth season. We put mm. seven uh, of our. The last seven years consecutive, we put at least one and sometimes two players at NFL camps. Mm. And I was at Wisconsin Whitewater for 19 years, and I had 
four draft choices during those years in Wisconsin Wide Water, and then at Northern Colorado, a Division One AA school, mm-hmm. I had a third round pick and a fifth round pick in my three years in Northern Colorado. So we have some experience with um, obviously NFL caliber type people, and we have had at our place. Uh, like I said, the last seven years, we've always had at least one and sometimes multiple kids, quarterbacks, wide receivers, offensive linemen, secondary, and uh, have went to the league. None of them have made it. Mm. Uh, Derek, the only kid that made it for me, uh, Northern Colorado had a receiver that played three years for the Packers, and a quarterback that was a backup for the Cowboys for two years. And I had a receiver out of Whitewater, a seventh-round draft pick, Derek Stanley, who hung on with the Rams for two years. It's unusual for guys at our level to make it, Derek. Mm-hmm. It's not unusual for those guys to have an opportunity. And Michael has a lot of uh, tremendous attributes that aren't just football-related. I mentioned about his academic success and what a good kid he is, but I, I also will tell you the guy is a guy that you can depend on in every form and fashion, and you know as well as I do that those kids are hard to find sometimes and when you find a guy that's got enough ability mm-hmm. to play, then that those other factors really become important on making decisions who you keep. Well, I guess uh, one final question for you, Coach, before we, uh, you know, I know your time is valuable. It's a very busy time of the year. Just kind of looking at your schedule, obviously your quarterback is from Anchorage, Alaska. You've got uh, some, you mentioned the guys from Chicago and some Wisconsin guys and some, some Illinois guys, uh, some Iowa guys as well, Arizona. Uh, tell me, when you go out on the recruiting trail, you try to try to get these guys to come to the University of Dubuque, what's your, what's your message? What's your selling point for your school and your, and your program? Yeah, first of all, I think the most important part of recruiting is the position coach or the recruiting coach and the head coach developing a relationship with the, the family, if there is a family, and with the kid. And I think one of the things you're always trying to do is uh, really give the, the, the chance to the kid he's going to get a chance to get coached and developed. And uh, I, I think that's really important. It, football is a, such a difficult sport there, and very few freshmen play. So you want to give them the ability that you're going to develop and uh, more importantly than the football aspect is you hope they're going to get a degree now i always tell our kids you're as dependent upon that as i am dependent upon that because mm-hmm. i sure as hell ain't going to go to class for you and i sure as hell ain't going to do the work for you but i sure as heck am going to try to help you and try to put you in a position to be successful academically now that part is always important and then of course Derek, I don't know if you've ever been on our campus. I don't think you have. At least I don't know that you mm-hmm. have. Our facilities are as good as anybody in the country at any level, and I'm including Division One. Mm-hmm. We have a beautiful stadium that we built uh, nine years ago that looks brand new. We've got an indoor football facility. Very few teams in Division Two and Division Three have that. We have a new uh, two million dollar locker room that we built uh, last year. Got into office for the first time. We have offices that can seat 100 uh, offices for all our football staff, and then a, an auditorium and meeting room that can seat 120 guys. So we have a lot of things in place. It's been very difficult for us in my eight years here uh, to recruit Iowa. I think there's probably some uh, history before I got here, Derek. And, you know, in the last five years, we've won 73% of our Iowa conference games. We're as successful as any team in the conference. But yet, yet, as I moved from I, through Iowa, that message sometimes is very hard to get out. Frustrating to me in many ways, Derek, but it is what it is. And uh, so we just continue to try to work as hard as we can uh, to get that message out that we're a, a very good football team with tremendous facilities and opportunities to have success. Coach, we appreciate the time. Good luck to you in uh, continuing to get that message out. And uh, it looks like another great year for you uh, coming up. Thanks, Derek. You have a good time on the radio point. Stan Sweefel, the head coach for the University of Dubuque, as we navigate our way through the Iowa Conference. We'll work our way to the Great Plains Athletic Conference, too, starting tomorrow. Morningside head coach Steve Ryan will be joining me. We appreciate Coach coming on and uh, in a pinch. And definitely looking forward to plenty more football interviews. Hey, our KMA Sports Hall of Fame announcement, our head coach for this year's class coming up.